<laughs> I mean, that is kind of funny if you're being honest. All right, guys, we're taking the Rumble Motors e-bike out. This is the Mighty Apex is what they call it. Um, we shouldn't have any rattles on this video compared to the last one. And I want to get that out of the way real quick because a lot of people said, I'm not going to buy that bike because it rattles. And that's because this part right here, if I can see it correctly, I can't even get my finger in there. Well, this was actually sitting on this bracket. So I bent this bracket up a little bit. So hopefully we don't have any more noise. But there's a huge update on this bike. This bike changed. After my video went live, the whole entire price of this bike changed. And I want to get on the way and tell you guys about the new exciting news that just happened, literally just happened. All right, so there's a process first, hold on. So there's this battery, this battery, the kill switch back here. Then I could turn it on. Then we're ready to go. Dang, this says 58.9 volts. This seems kind of high, no? Oh, never mind. I guess max is 58.8. So that actually sounds about right. All right, let me turn my watch off because most of the time my watch will just trip out because my gloves hit it. So let's get that turned off. All right, let's get on the way and talk about this bike. I think I might have ran over poop in my front yard, man. All I smell is shit. I'm not even kidding. I hope it's not on my actual like shoes. I'd rather it be on the bike. Go, people, go. I'll pull out of here. Oh, yeah. This, this has like a weird throttle if you like hit it full out. It's very weird. I heard of one guy saying that the front motor on his was going out and he had to drop it off to the shop and get it worked on and everything. Hopefully we don't have an issue with this because I don't have the shop nearby. But let's get on to what I actually wanted to talk about when getting on this bike. So when I made my last video on this bike, which wasn't technically a review video i just kind of wanted to take it out and ride it which i'm doing right now because i never have a day off anymore i'm so busy is the fact that as soon as i posted that video this bike is now thirty four hundred dollars thirty four hundred dollars for everything that's including the carbon fiber panels that's also including the second battery so after i had already shot that video i had a phone call with rj for probably it was a two hours it was very very long who's going and he was super cool, go. So he was super cool and I told him, you know, about the Aerial Rider Grizzly being like $3,200 and that comes with dual batteries. I can understand why the carbon fiber is like an extra accessory because carbon fiber is very expensive. I have a carbon fiber hood on my car and it is absolutely ridiculously expensive and it's already faded within two years. Uh, I would definitely ceramic coat this by the way, just a side note. But the fact that it comes with a carbon fiber and now two batteries, so you're getting 40 amp hours in total on a 52 volt e-bike that's a sane amount of range for $3,400 I'm so glad that they knocked off $900 of the price so now it's definitely definitely affordable this is hundred percent worth it now because think about it you guys might still say oh my god $3,400 is a lot of money a super 73 R and an RX are close to like $4,000 and that's not even including taxes or shipping, depending on where you stay at. So it's like, this is a way better bike than that, 100%. The Aerial Rider has always been a better bike than the Super 73 e-bikes. It's just the Super 73 has a huge community of people that can, uh, you know, get you parts, work on it. There's a bunch of uh, cool accessories you can get and kind of customize it. I think that's one of the coolest things about a Super 73. But is it actually worth the money? Not really, not anymore. I love my Super 73 because I went 72 volt. I don't think I would ever spend $4,000 on a Super 73 anymore. I just highly wouldn't. It just, no. The only thing that's really bad about this bike is it's hoppy, like from zero to five. Um, the Aerial Rider is kind of like that too. I feel like this one has a little bit more power. So it has like, I don't know, it's a little worse. Hey, come on now. People suck. <laughs> it's gonna turn too, I can tell. It's gonna turn. I'm gonna make it. Sweet. Anyways, the Aerial Rider Grizzly is not as bad. Oh, I'm not gonna make it. Crap. So this one has more of a twitch than the Aerial Rider, but it's okay. You kind of get used to it. Woo, woo. Um, RJ did say with the new bikes that he is going to include a software tool 
So it's something that I think plugs into the display and the display is connected to the controller and I think that's how you update your bike. So I think he said all the models that are getting shipped out later this year, because I think it's October is when they get shipped out, is uh, going to come with that plug. So future updates and all that kind of stuff is super cool. Now I saw a lot of people saying like, oh really, I, I'm buying a bike that needs updates, like it's not fine tuned right out of the box. And honestly, your phone's the same way. <laughs> Like, I got that new Asus ROG Ally that, like, uh, it's like a Steam Deck. It's like a little gaming console. Man, that thing needs updates like hell. That thing is so buggy right off the bat, and it's $700 for a little console. But your phone is the same way. You update your phone almost every month or every other month. So there's no problem with that. I actually would rather have a bike that gets updates to fix some stuff. That's just me personally. I don't even think they look to make a U-turn. All right. Is that guy trying to tell me to pop a wheelie on this thing? Seriously? <laughs> Come on, kid. I can't do a damn wheelie on this bike. This thing is so heavy with a front motor. If you've never had an e-bike with a front motor on it, just know I'm not a big fan of dual motors because it's so much heavier all around. Like, the weights balance a little bit better, but having a motor on the front, it just, it's too powerful, especially when all your weight goes to the back, kind of like a rear-wheel drive car, you know? Like, all the weight transfers to the back when you hit it. So that's why rear-wheel drive cars are a little bit easier getting off the line. That's why all these uh, drag racers use them. Oh my God, it's so windy. I'm about to fly off this bike, even though it's heavy as hell. I would have felt a little scary on the Mac Fox. Actually, there's another bike I just rode the other day. Uh, it was 55 pounds. It was insanely light. It's crazy. All right, I got to put my uh, visor down so I can see. And as you guys have noticed, as we've been riding, have you guys heard anything? Look at all these bumps I'm going over on the side of the road. You don't hear that rattle anymore, so I fixed it. I got rid of it. If you guys are really like skeptical of it coming back, you can just put a foam piece of pad in between those two units just to uh, be on the safe side, but uh, I'm not having a problem. Woo! God! It's always weird getting used to the, <laughs> the speed from zero to 10, man. It's sketchy. Oh, now this bike doesn't turn as good as a new Tulare XXX. I mean, I don't, I don't figure it's going to. It has fat tires on it. And uh, I honestly want to say this is heavier than the Tulare XXX. But funny enough, once this thing stops hobbling around for the first like three miles per hour, it actually takes off just like uh, the Tulare in a way, like for like maybe the first like 10, maybe 15 miles per hour then obviously the Talaria just keeps on going and it has a lot of power. But this thing definitely takes off well. I love it. But I, I would really highly suggest people just getting this bike for how badass it looks. I saw some people say like, I don't like how it looks, it has too many curves. What are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? <laughs> this thing is the coolest bike I own. Like this thing is absolutely gorgeous as hell. There you're gonna go. It's your turn to go, buddy. It's your turn to go. You staring at the bike? Come on now. There we go. You hear that little, <laughs> we peeled out a little bit? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I really do like this bike. Um, it doesn't make as a lot of noise as the Tulare XXX, but it also makes more noise than your standard e-bike that has one motor in the back. Like this is definitely way louder then a Super 73 that you're gonna take on the road. I don't know if it's coming over camera very well from my GoPro microphone, but this is definitely a uh, loud bike. And I will say it is not the most comfortable bike I've been on. The seat feels okay. It feels decently comfortable. The suspension is a little rough. It does have adjustments in the back, but unfortunately there is no adjustments in the front. These are inverted forks. And yeah, if you guys can see down in there, you guys can see that there is no adjustment. So that sucks. And um, talking to RJ on the phone for that two hour conversation, he said that they're thinking about getting rid of the front motor altogether and just putting a bigger powerful motor in the back. Or what they're thinking about doing is putting a less powerful motor up front because it's so jerky and it peels out and then put a slightly bigger motor in the back, which makes sense. That's something I would probably do because you get the extra power off the line, but you don't get too much where it's like unstable and it's like 
pulling out, it might be kind of worrisome for like some new e-bike riders. Cause it's definitely aggressive. Like if you don't, if you don't have your weight forward at all, like I'll show you if I have more of my weight back on how much this thing peels out if it doesn't hop around. So check this out. Let's see if I can get it. <laughs> I mean, that is kind of funny if you're being honest. So when I ride this bike, I have more of my weight forward on it. But if you had more of your weight towards the back, you could just peel out with this thing over and over and over. Maybe that's actually the way to go when I race people is kind of lift up the front so it doesn't jerk too much. Woo! Okay, if you actually do that, then uh, it doesn't hop. That's not too bad. And I was, also, I was also asking RJ, I was like, how come you guys didn't try to save some money and putting this like package with the front wheel off and put it on the side like most e-bike companies do because this comes with the front wheel already installed. You don't have to put that on there. And he made it clear to me, he said, it's basically for um, safety issues because since it's an actual powerful front motor, someone might not hook up the front motor correctly. And you know what, that makes sense. You don't know if someone's gonna actually put the front motor on and connect it right, uh, bend the pins or just not tighten, like torque it down good enough and then their front wheel comes off and then, you know, people come after uh, RJ from Rumble Motors about how unsafe their bike was, but it was someone that installed it incorrectly, so. I'm staying with this guy. I like how he didn't stop at all. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And he's going the same speed as me. Go faster, buddy. You're on a 50 mile per hour street and you're going 35. How is a bike passing you? I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> there he goes. Now you're speeding up with traffic. He gave me a nod. What's up, guy? What's up, guy? Hey, nice signal. Why so wide? Man, I feel like when I'm not trying to have all this power, I gotta go to like front or rear motor. Rear motor would probably feel better when you're not trying to go super fast, but I'm not a big fan of always having to switch out like rear motor, front motor. I've noticed I get a lot more vibration by using just the rear motor in the panels. It's a little bit of noise, it's not too, too bad but I definitely noticed it. Right, let's kind of cruise around a little bit. Woo! This bike and the Talaria, man, like these came, well, they came at a good time. I mean, I want to ride them regardless, but they, they came at a bad time because they both came at the same time. I feel like I'm kind of fighting over which one I want to ride more. I will say the Talaria is so much more better and funner, but it's not an e-bike. You got to get pedals for that thing. And another thing you guys got to keep in mind is uh, this bike is $3,400. I don't know how tax is going to be, but I also don't know about shipping as well. The Talaria is $3,500 with tax, with shipping. So that's something you have to keep in mind as well. A lot of people say just get the R at that point. It's another $1,000, but I mean, I mean, yeah, the R is way better than the XXX, but you can't beat the price of the XXX. But you also have to factor in once you buy the bike, you need pedals. So factor in another like $200 for pedals to be legal. Where well, this bike is already legal as an e-bike and you gotta be careful because people don't pay attention. Thank you. Idiots. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys at nighttime. Hey, Virgil's getting carts. <laughs> That's too funny. I realized my headlight was on the whole time. I better turn that off. I forgot how to turn it off. Oh, it's this button. It looks like a horn. The fact that it's red reminds me of a horn. I feel like the horn button should have been red and the headlight switch should have been just black. <laughs> it's just me. Turn on my headlight. <laughs> you saw it? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Still working, still working. Oh yeah, beautiful. Get that facing done. You know what working at a store is like, you gotta do that everywhere. Hey PJ, you wanna let me out? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go clock out right now.
All right, guys, like I said, about five seconds. It's nighttime now, worked my shift. It's been a horrible day. We'll talk about it in a little bit. And then some more information I got to tell you guys about this bike that I just remembered. So we're going to get on the way and uh, talk about it. Yeah, it's fun, man. It's a little heavy because you got two motors and two batteries, but it's just probably cool get, looking. You have to get used to it probably, huh? Yeah. It definitely takes off like crazy because two motors, so the front spins. It peels out. Wow. <laughs> How fast this one goes? Uh, it's about 40, like 39 is what I normally get. Yeah. It's not too bad. All right. Woo, it's a little chilly out here. I didn't bring my jacket, but I will say it is nice. Now I'm going to turn off my watch because most of the time my gloves hit it. Happens all the time and just reads everything I say. So um, the batteries are on, so I turn both of them on. Flip one of these switches on. Doesn't matter which one it is if you're using both batteries. And the bad thing that um, I noticed, and I talked to RJ about it too, is this does not run with both batteries. So that is actually a downside to this bike. Both batteries do not run down together. Only one runs down at a time. And if you want to use the other one, you got to switch over to it. So if you guys can see the display, um, I'll try to read as best as possible. Um, 58.9 volts on here. But check this out. If I switch this one off, the bike's going to turn off, obviously. Let's switch the other switch, the kill switch underneath the seat. We are down to 54.6 volts. And that's because it only runs off one battery at a time. So once one battery goes down, you have to flip your um, kill switch underneath or your breaker switch, I guess you'd say, to go to the secondary battery. So you don't need to have both of these batteries on at the exact same time. So just a heads up, they're not connected with a like, battery blender or anything like that. So... That's unfortunate. I would have loved to see them drain at the same time, but it's not a deal breaker. Um, it is what it is. You know, like once you're running low on one battery, you switch to the other one. It's going to give you a very good idea of like half of your range, wherever you're at on the ride. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go to the higher voltage one. I'm going to switch that. Let's see. Does it do it off? To, uh, does it do it on the fly? I think I switched it. Oh, yeah, there it goes. So look, the voltage, if you guys can see it, it's going up little by little by little. That's kind of cool. Not too bad. All right. So let's get our, um, we got our headlight on? No. All right. Now we got our headlight on. All right. Let's go. Let's get the heck out of here. Yeah. Ow. Rough. All right. I'm going to take my normal way because we didn't take the normal way last time. Let's go over there. I was wondering why the bike was going so slow. I am only in uh, pedal assist number one. Now we're in six and we are hauling ass. Now we're basically on a full battery charge, baby. So, whoa, holy, 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 whoa. Oh man, it's always <laughs> weird getting used to the power on this. Man, if you guys are not used to e-bikes, it is very, very sketchy. Whoa. Oh my God, okay. Going in the turn, man. <laughs> it's literally, it's like an on-off switch. Oh, there's the coppers. There's the police. They gonna get me. They gonna get me. Um, another thing is, I noticed on my last video that I did, 100% this light is absolutely insane. This way, way beats almost every single e-bike headlight I've had, other than the illegal headlight that I put on my Zeus. It's like a bar. It's actually similar to this, but a lot wider. Um, this is one of the brightest headlights ever. I was a little disappointed in the Talaria XXX. That headlight sucks, even at the, even with the high beam on. So uh, I love this headlight, it's great. But what I wanted to say is I noticed it's off to the side, so the bracket needs to be adjusted. Ow. All right, so look how bright this thing is on this trail. You guys already know, I always take this trail for like all my e-bike stuff, and I'll pull up right here between the lights so you guys can see, because we didn't do this last time. So I apologize. All right, so check this out. So the headlight's straight, I can tell it's slightly off. The way this adjusts is with thumb screws. So if I just take that thumb screw, just kind of move it a little bit. That looks, that looks a little bit more in the middle. Yeah, I'd say that's a little bit more in the middle, but that actually looks way, way off though. So I don't want it to look like super crooked. It looks misty out here too. I don't know, I, by the headlight, I can see a bunch of mist. Um, so check this out. So this is how the tail light looks. I can actually uh, go all the way back here because 
this is not a long bike it's kind of compact it's not it doesn't feel small at all though i don't want you guys to think that so this doesn't get brighter it just flashes that's the only bad thing all right so let's go here let's switch on the turn signal ow god that is bright so this is the left turn signal that's how that one works and this is if you're turning right so it starts from this side and goes to the other side that's probably washing out my gopro that thing is so bright absolutely insane so check this out Ooh, okay i was making sure the kick stands down you also have pegs in the back too um it's not really a two-seater man that, that's sick it's actually a pretty badass uh turn signal now if you do have the turn signal on and you hit the brakes what happens nothing oh that's unfortunate so if you hit the brakes nothing happens when your turn signal is on i mean you're going to be stopped for the most part anyway and it looks like there was a delay from the turn signal going back to the brake light. Still not a, you know, still not bad. But um, yeah, this thing is so, so cool. Um, like I was saying, it has pegs in the back. It's really not a two-seater. You could probably fit like someone else on there, but two full-size humans. Uh, the seat is not very long. This is very short. And I know you guys probably can't see, and I got the hiccup somehow right now. Oh, <laughs> killing me. But um, yeah, it's... Uh, really dark over here so i want you i want to give you guys an idea of this headlight so this is with wait oh this has an auto off it's about to turn off in three minutes huh hmm, that's interesting all right so let's turn the headlight off so that's complete dark we're gonna have this light on rj said this light is to make sure you know the bike is on because you guys could store the bike in your garage thinking you turn the headlight off and everything like that but you need to hit the kill switch to actually turn it off completely or your bike's just going to be sitting running down with the battery so if you hit the thing again if I'm not mistaken, there's a high beam, low beam, and a flashing beam. So I don't know what mode that is. I don't know what mode that is. That's a flashing beam right there. I don't know why they would put that on there. I have no idea. This is the high beam. I can see so far with this. So we're going to leave it on the high beam because I like that. Auto timer is still turning off even though we've been hitting buttons on here. So maybe it goes off the throttle. Um, we have a horn. The horn is loud. I shouldn't be using it right now. And when you want to take off and get away from people, there's someone on the trail, you just... <laughs> there we go it's not wanting to turn off anymore because we hit the throttle man this thing picks up speed i love it these are one of the bikes that i want to have a storage garage for because it's just a one of a kind uh, you can't i don't know i don't know how to explain it you can't get rid of this bike the way it looks it just i don't know i don't even know how long they're going to keep this bike around maybe they're going to come out with a version two because um rumble motors is made for having different versions of their bike they have i think they're on version five of one of their i don't know what bike it's called but i know they had an air ss2 and i don't know what other bike is on five i can't remember the name i apologize but a lot of people have been waiting for that bike and so they have a bunch of different versions they come out with so they might be on a totally different version of this uh down the road and it's gonna have a totally different setup you never know like we talked about um, RJ said he was thinking about going with a full motor in the back. I told him, honestly, that's what I would do. Now, your bike makes it different from all the other ones out there on the market compared to the Aerial Rider Grizzly. Those are like the two bikes, this one and the Aerial Rider, for having a dual motor setup. No bikes out there really have a dual motor setup unless you do it yourself. But it's not really ideal. It's honestly, for me riding e-bikes and having a, a lot of knowledge that I know, it's better to just have one big motor in the back. I'm telling you guys, it feels so much better to just have one motor in the back that's like a 2500 watt motor, kind of like the Lyric Graffiti uh, e-bike. That is a fantastic bike. Zero noise from it, definitely a lot of torque, and I love that bike, but it had no rear suspension, so that was like the hugest downside to that bike. All right, we're going to make it. We're going to go through it. Bye! Woo! <laughs> Ric Flair, woo! Oh, yeah! God, I can see everything. Now, as I'm uh, riding this bike, there are a lot of, uh, like, you don't hear that noise from the fender anymore, but there's a lot of other noises on this bike, and it's honestly just reminding me of the Onyx RCR. It's really these panels. So the carbon fiber is resting up against some of the metal on the e-bike, right? Well, that causes a little bit of excess, like rattle and vibration, especially with having two motors on here. So depending on the motor RPM, you definitely always kind of hear that every so often. 
it's not a big deal to me. Um, I do like having a bike that's completely silent, don't get me wrong, but I'm not too mad about it. The biggest issues I really have with this bike is the start from zero to like three or zero five miles an hour, it's just very rough. But I found out if you just lean back a little bit and let the front wheel kind of just like peel out a little bit, it's not as like jumpy. I feel like maybe there's just so much weight on the front. What the heck is that noise? I heard something, maybe it's a train. I don't know if you guys heard that. Is it, what is that? Oh, it is a train. That scared the heck out of me, okay. All right. <laughs> Whoa, see, see, it was like really jumpy and you guys probably can't tell on camera, but you just gotta lean back to not get that jumpiness going. Thank you for waiting trucks. You guys were really big, you guys would definitely run me over. Yay. <laughs> I started pedaling for them so they know. On my e-bike, baby! On my e-bike! <laughs> the next thing I'm not a very big fan of on this bike is the way the headlight mounting bracket is made. I don't really think it's a very good solution of having little thumb screws to loosen up how your headlight goes on. I would have liked to see like a dedicated, like, I don't know, this is a dedicated headlight bracket, don't get me wrong, it's just a more thought out um, approach. Maybe going to a big like seven or eight inch headlight Again, going back to the Lyric Graffiti e-bike, that was a badass headlight and it was very bright. But I will say I like bikes like the Super 73 RX that has the cover. It hides all your wires. You don't see any mess. This looks like more of a motorcycle from the front. I love the look of it. I just wish the headlights were a little bit wider, but the adjustability for the headlight, super easy and simple, but I just don't like it. And the biggest, woo! <laughs> The biggest complaint I actually have about this bike is I'm not a fan of the tires. And you're gonna see here in a second, if I can remember when I go over some stuff, is uh, it is very easy to catch like the lines in the road depending on the road that you're on. And I, I just don't like that. It just catches the lines in the road. Um, I would like to switch over to like the Rev1 tires. That's something that I think um, are really really good tire to be honest i mean it's not puncture resistant or anything like that you can still get a flat but they're not that bad but here's what i'm gonna say like going over overpasses you're gonna notice that it, it changes so look how the road changes right here it's like kind of white now this thing is all over the place like the whole bike is shaking back and forth i can't make this up it's literally like zigzagging like this i, I don't like these tires let me use my turn signal let's go let's go and if I hadn't said it already, obviously the jerkiness from the front motor. Um, another thing is there are no turn signals in the front. So that's unfortunate. Uh, RJ said it would have been very simple. All the wiring is already there. It wouldn't have been hard to do, but it just got overlooked. All they would have had to do is drill two holes in this panel right here on the side that you can probably easily see because we got that light in the back and they could have just put turn signals up front. It's literally all integrated into the bike already. So maybe someone can actually like send some wires and they can put their own turn signals in. But I mean, I don't suggest messing around with something, especially for warranty issues. You're definitely going to be voiding your warranty if you do that. But hey, it, once you buy your bike, do whatever you do, whatever the heck you want with it. You know, it's like buying a new car. You're going to void your warranty if you mess with it. But most people do mess with it. Oh, that was a big stick. Um, another thing is, I don't think I mentioned it yet because I'm still waiting to do my whole video review on it but it comes with two sets of keys. So it's not one key for both batteries, which would have been nice, but at the same time, it is nice to have four keys, but then it doesn't really matter at the same time because you have two keys for each battery. So if you end up losing a set, you might lose a set to the whole other battery and then you're never gonna be able to remove it. Now, another thing I wanna do in my video review, whenever I got time to do it, I really hope it's soon, I just don't know, is I wanna see if you can take these batteries off with the panel like the carbon fiber panel or the factory panel well now it's always going to come with a carbon fiber panel now because they say it's included but is can you take off the batteries and remove them without having to uh take that panel off and when i talked to rj about removing the panel he actually said it's very simple there's two thumb screws on the front you're not going to be able to see them right now it's too dark but there's two th uh, thumb screws one's right down in here in the front and then there's two uh, two bolts um, on the bottom. He said, do not mess with the bolts on the top. That just connects the top piece. Once you take all the bottom ones off and the thumb screw, the whole 
cover. It's like a clamshell. The base, the whole thing just comes up in one unit and then you can access everything. And I really am curious to see how this frame looks because I think it's very similar to the Super 73 frame, the RX. It's not, but I think it's very similar. Um, so I'm really curious to see that, but I really want to know if these batteries come off without taking the side panel off. I really think they will. Um, that's another thing too, if you guys want to make this bike lighter, and since it comes with dual batteries now for the price of $3,400, which is awesome, I think it should have been like that to begin with. I'm glad RJ changed it. Um, you guys can always take one battery out. Like I don't need both of these batteries to go back and forth to work. And I can actually have a more agile, you know, bike that turns a little better because it'd be a little lighter. It'd feel a little bit better on the road. And then you're not going to be bringing a lot of extra weight with you as well. Depending on how heavy you are too, you might want to take some weight off this bike to make it go faster. So it's like a little, uh, a mod you can do to yourself. It's kind of like lighting up your car using dry ice to take out all the de the sound deadening and stuff in your car to make it lighter so you can race it and go fast. It's kind of nice when you have a very light e-bike at the end of the day because they feel so good. Um, it's funny because I think I talked about it earlier, the Talaria XXX. It feels light in the front, but it's this bike is heavy as hell in the front compared to the Talaria. But I think this bike is actually overall more heavier than Talaria but the rear of this bike feels lighter than the Talaria. So it's it's kind of funny. That's just something I noticed as I was moving it um, the other day. And it's not it's a mid-drive motor on the Talaria. It's not a rear. So I don't know, it's kind of weird how that feels. Maybe I'm just overthinking. But um, all I can say is this is just a fantastic bike. You really got to get used to the throttle. So it's not going to be for everybody. For me personally, I don't mind if you seriously do buy this bike before I get to my review video is... I would actually do it now because it's 1700 bucks. You pay half the price for the bike right now and it's going to be $3,400 and they're going to like, they said on their thing, they're going to take care of the shipping. Now that doesn't say that they're going to pay for the shipping. So I don't know about that, but it says they're going to organize the shipping for you. So they're going to take care of the shipping like company that's going to go out to you. But again, I don't know what they're going to be charging for shipping. All I know is they're definitely giving you two batteries and the carbon fiber stuff which is a game changer. You cannot say this bike doesn't look good compared to a very similar bike to Grizzly compared to this one. They're just on two different brackets. Like, this is like, well, I wanna say performance. Ooh, performance is pretty much, it almost feels the same. It's been a long time since I've been on my Grizzly, but um, this is like the sports car looking version. This is like comparing a Honda Civic to a Lamborghini. This is just badass looking. And um, I don't know, I, I highly recommend the bike now that they changed the price. I think that was a very good job on them. So um, do what you guys want. Uh, I don't make any commission on their website. So you guys can go check them out. Um, you can drop a comment, see if you guys are actually thinking about it or maybe there's another bike. But just keep in mind, Super 73 bikes that are similar to this and they don't even have two motors and they go way slower are $4,000. And this is 3,400 bucks. So, and you get real carbon fiber so if you're a car guy you would love this so just something to think about all right before you guys drop a comment say it's just too much money at the end of the day um there are definitely cheaper chinese bikes out there don't get me wrong spend your money where you want to spend it but i highly highly recommend this bike it's it's gorgeous one of my favorite bikes now in my garage so i'll see you guys in the next one true mvps later